The American Revolution introduced turmoil into the lives of many British and American people during the late 18th century. However, the Seneca Native Americans of the Iroquois people were also affected, as political and military conflict extended to their northeastern territory. Also known as Cain Twa Khan or John O'Bale, Corn Planter was born between the years of 1732 and 1746 in the village of Conawagas, located on the Genesee River in New York. After gaining prominence as a warrior and politician during the French and Indian War, he became an influential Grand Chief of the Six Nations. In this alliance of six Iroquois-speaking tribes, including the Onondaga, Oneida, Mohawk, Cayuga, Tuscarora, and Seneca, Corn Planter played a prominent role, often as a voice for peace. As the American Revolution approached, the Six Nations experienced their own conflicts. With political divisions arising within the Alliance, Corn Planter's role as a Seneca war chief became more important than ever. During the first two years of the Revolution, Seneca involvement was purely diplomatic, and both the British and American sides preferred Native American neutrality. However, both sides began to take an interest in Native Americans as allies after two years. Western Seneca were torn between old ties to the British and connection to Fort Duquesne in the hands of Continental Congress. The Seneca's first major participation after the breakout of the war was in the Council's gathering at Fort Pitts in the fall of 1775 and summer of 1776. During the Second Council, Iroquois leader Corn Planter, Black Snake, and Red Jacket urged the Iroquois to remain neutral in the war. But in 1777, Mohawk leader Joseph Brandt attempted to persuade the Seneca and the other Iroquois to fight for Britain. As a member of the most easterly of the Iroquois, Brandt always tended to support the British. Despite his best efforts at peace, Corn Planter could not keep his people out of the conflict. And when the council reconvened, the British successfully persuaded the Seneca and Iroquois present with gifts of war belts, rum, weapons, and gold, promising protection and land. During the war, Corn Planter and the Seneca fought successfully in the battles of Oriskany, Wyoming, Wyalusing, and Cherry Valley. Corn Planter helped lead Sullivan's raid in 1779, and George Washington answered by destroying most Seneca and Cayuga territory, earning himself the Iroquois name Town Destroyer. The Seneca continued to fight, raid, and burn for the crown until the end of the war, and it was estimated the Iroquois killed five to ten times the number they lost in combat. Overall, though, the destruction shifted the Seneca population west, closer to the Ohio Indians. Following the revolution, the Iroquois traveled to Fort Stanwix for peace negotiations with the victorious Americans in 1784. During the following meetings with New York and congressional commissioners, it became clear that the Iroquois were viewed as defeated people who were expected to cede land. In vain, Corn Planter attempted to combat these expectations, eloquently speaking for the preservation of the 1768 boundary. He strongly objected to the surrender of the western lands without the consent of the Ohio Indians. The Americans were persistent, though, and the four Senecas that the council gave in. They agreed to let Oneida Good Peter, who sided with the Americans, speak for them. This forced the Iroquois to surrender titles to all lands westward of a line four miles east of Niagara Falls, and to land six miles square around the fort at Oswego. Relations between Pennsylvania negotiators and the Iroquois were more amicable than those of the New York Council. However, the Iroquois still ultimately lost, as they gave up interest in Pennsylvania lands north and west of the 1768 treaty line in return for goods totaling $5,000. Corn Planter became known among the Iroquois as one who had been easily to American force. The injustices against the Seneca continued, as land speculators Oliver Phelps and Nathaniel Gorm purchased 2,600,000 acres of Seneca lands in New York, while only paying half the amount they promised. And in January of 1789, treaty negotiations took place at Fort Harmon. The Seneca reserved for themselves the land from Lake Chattanooga and Conewago Creek east of the New York border. But due to confusion about the New York border, Pennsylvania gave them nothing. In 1790, Corn Planter traveled to Philadelphia giving speeches to convince George Washington of the mistreatment of the Seneca. But all they received was Washington's promise that the agreements at Fort Sandwix, already protested by the Seneca, would be protected. He was seen as responsible for the losses and injustices suffered by the Iroquois, as his tendency toward peace allowed the Americans many victories. Ultimately, though, 
Corn planters' struggle during the Revolutionary period embodied the hardships faced by the Seneca, Iroquois, and Native Americans in general during this time. Caught in a war they did not want to fight, the Iroquois suffered both losses of lives and land to the American and British sides. Though Cornplanter always strived for peace, he could not protect his people from the force and injustice of the white man they faced.